version 5.2 of Midjourney gave us tons of great new features. But one feature has mostly been overlooked, and it's far more powerful than it initially seems. High variation mode doesn't just give you better variations, it actually allows you to maintain a consistent style in ways that weren't possible before. Now that's a huge deal for storytelling. So if you're working on books, comics, storyboards, or anything involving a story, you'll want to stick around. So while I was digging deeper into what you could do with high variation mode, and I realized that you could actually use it to create consistent styles, I did what I always do. I did a quick check on YouTube. And I bumped into this video released by Future Tech Pilot just a few weeks ago. He covers the exact same method and topic, but from a slightly different angle, which is really great. And he's got some really awesome content, so make sure you go check out his channel later on after watching this video. So before we get started, let's first make sure that we've got all the right settings. I'm going to start off by entering the settings command in order to open up the settings panel, and then we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to switch on remix mode. This is important so that whenever we hit one of the variation buttons, the remix prompt window opens up. And we're also going to switch to high variation mode. Now you might be wondering what does high variation mode actually do? Well, let me show you real quick. I'm going to enter a very basic command, house, nothing more. And now you'll see the usual buttons that we always have below all of our image grids and the row with the V buttons. Whenever you hit the V button now, Remix mode will make sure that you get the remix prompt. And the fact that we activated high variation mode will ensure that it will be treated in high variation mode. If I switch to low variation mode, then we'll be using more or less the old version of remix, but we want to use the new remix. Also, just as a reminder, whenever you have an upskilled image, you'll see the buttons very strong and very subtle. Very strong is high variation mode and very subtle is low variation mode. All right, so let's get started with our very first example. I'm going to move myself to the side here and enter my first prompt, imagine, and then graphic novel illustration, wide angle of deserted city, dystopian apocalyptic, and let's start. Okay, perfect. So these are the typical images that you would expect from this sort of a prompt. But now the difference is we're going to use one of these four images in order to maintain our style. And it's kind of hard to describe what I mean by that because we're not necessarily just maintaining the medium, so the graphic novel illustration, but we're also maintaining the color scheme and also parts of the composition. And most of all, what this method does, it helps us to maintain the overall setting, the theme and the atmosphere of the image that we choose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the image in the bottom left corner and create a new scene, a new image based on that style. I'm basically going to be able to create another shot that's set at the very same point in time in that storyline. And I'm going to do it without mentioning dystopian or apocalyptic anywhere in my prompt. So let me close this real quick. I'm going to hit the V3 button because I want to work with the bottom left one. That will open up the remix prompt. And then I'm going to enter this prompt, two infantry soldiers walking toward building. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to add any stylistic elements. Submit. And what you'll notice is that these new images are stylistically super close to the one that we remixed. They did lose a little bit of the graphic novel illustration style, but we didn't mention anything regarding the deserted city, nor did we mention apocalyptic or dystopian. Nothing about our prompt actually says that this is what the city should look like. So just to illustrate my point, let me show you what happens if I enter this prompt individually without remixing. These images now look very different. Now, obviously it's still a war zone. But the style is now photorealistic. The mood and the color scheme is also different. So what can we do to maintain the graphic novel illustration style that we had in our first image? Well, building on that previous example, let's simply reinsert that medium. So I'm gonna go back and hit the V3 button on our original image one more time. It will open up the remix prompt. And this time I'm going to enter the same prompt, two infantry soldiers walking toward building, except that I'm going to keep the graphic novel illustration at the beginning. Then I hit submit. And as you can see, this time it retains the full style much better. The color scheme and the mood are fully intact and the composition is roughly still close to the original. But now you might be wondering, well, what's the point of all this? Can't we just prompt these images directly? Well, let's give that a try. 
and let's enter imagine and then graphic novel illustration two infantry soldiers walking into building dystopian apocalyptic and yes you get roughly the same style and you also get far more diverse compositional options but they're not necessarily the same color scheme you're also using up tokens in your prompt in order to describe the mood that could otherwise be used to describe more things about the subject and the environment. So it's always a trade-off between these two elements. Let me show you two examples that illustrate this quite well. I'm going to go back to our original image and hit the V3 button again to remix it. And this time I'll enter the prompt graphic novel illustration and cat and mouse running through kitchen. Submit. What you can see here now is that we've managed to place at least the cat, maybe not the mouse. We have the cat that's running through a kitchen and it's placed in a very similar setting as in the original image that we remixed. The landscape is dystopian, apocalyptic, and even the color scheme is very close. Now, if I tried to prompt this directly in a single prompt without remixing, graphic novel illustration, cat and mouse running through kitchen, dystopian, apocalyptic, then I will get slightly different results. Sure enough, the style is similar. However, there's much more focus on the cat now, and the scene within the kitchen is much more defined. So creating the previous example without using remix mode may either require more words, or it might not work at all. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking to learn how to control Midjourney and improve your prompting skills, check out Masters of Midjourney and a whole bunch of other free stuff down in the video description. Okay, so let's look at another example. In this example, I'm going to start off with this prompt. 3D Pixar animation, wide angle of rabbit, eating a long carrot inside a forest, playful, cute. I'm going to use style raw, simply because in all of the previous tests that I did, I noticed that all of the carrots tended to have a shape similar to an egg. And I'm guessing that's because a lot of the training data may contain rabbits in a context of the Easter bunny. Anyway, so using style raw and saying long carrot is kind of my attempt to try to get an actual carrot and not an egg shaped carrot. So let's have a look how these turn out now. And sure enough, just have a look. I've got all these orange eggs, maybe even some orange cherry tomatoes here and something in the bottom right corner that looks kind of like a, it's, it's a really weird carrot. But all of this doesn't really matter because it's not about the carrot or the rabbit. It's about the style. So I'm going to work off of the bottom left one again and pay attention to the overall setting, the colors, and maybe even some of the objects that you see in this image. Because that's going to be the reference point that we'll use in order to determine how well the style was actually replicated. All right, so we're going to hit the V3 button to open the remix prompt. I'll enter my new prompt. And you'll see that I kept the medium at the beginning of the prompt. And I'm doing this because otherwise the results would look slightly too realistic. But then I enter my prompt, two badgers hiding behind a tree. Then I hit submit. And sure enough, it maintained the setting, the colors, and just basically the overall style. We've got these two really, really cute badgers. Let's compare these results to what a regular straight prompt would look like. I'm going to enter my prompt, imagine and then 3D Pixar animation, wide angle of two badgers hiding behind a tree inside a forest, playful, cute. Now, obviously this is a much longer prompt. So let's have a look. And sure enough, this also worked pretty well. However, if you were to compare both images side by side, you would see that these images have a slightly greener, slightly colder tone. The environment is also a little bit different with slightly different vegetation. One thing I will add though, is that the characters look much more like badgers. So why is that? Let me quickly show you another prompt with a different character. I'm going to go back and hit remix again. And then I'll enter 3D Pixar animation, gazelle jumping across meadow. Submit. What you can see in these images is that Yes, if you're not paying too much attention, you might think that this is actually a gazelle. And the overall style is very close to the remixed version. You've got the same color scheme, a similar setting, and the style is overall great. But if you pay close attention, the face of our gazelle seems to have somewhat merged with a rabbit. And the gazelle also has some very rabbit-like ears. The very same thing happened with our original badgers too. So how do you avoid this? Well, first of all, let's enter a entirely new prompt. Imagine 
and 3D Pixar animation, wide angle of forest environment, playful, cute. And I've also added a negative prompt, no animals and creatures, just to avoid seeing any sort of creatures or animals in the image. So let me confirm this prompt and let's have a look at what they look like. Right, so this creates four different images that basically contain the scene that we want to work with. All four of them have mostly the same style. The only thing that we need to do is we need to pick something as our base image and base style. I'm personally gonna go with the top left one this time. So I'll go back and hit the V1 button. And I'll enter my new prompt, which is 3D Pixar animation, two badgers hiding behind tree. Submit. And you'll notice two things right now. First of all, the badges look much better than in our original remixed version. There's also slightly less focus on the characters overall. Now that's something you may or may not like, but the overall setting, the style, the colors, they're all roughly the same. Now granted, the ones here on the bottom left, they look kind of weird, but we can do this with all sorts of other things. So let me hit the remix button one more time, V1. And this time I'll enter 3D picture animation, two badgers hugging each other. Submit. And that gives us these really, really cute images of two badgers hugging each other. And they're mostly in the same kind of environment. It just looks like they might be positioned somewhere else within that forest. Let me show you one more. Going to hit V1 again on our environment. And then I'll enter 3D Pixar animation trio of dancing badgers. Submit. Now I'm not entirely sure whether we'll actually get three badgers, but we'll see. It doesn't always work. And yes, actually, these look pretty good. This is turbo mode, by the way. This shows you just how quick turbo mode is. It's also super expensive. Anyway, so let's have a look. And yeah, we've got mostly three badgers. Maybe some of them might be closer to the rac to raccoons. I don't know. But we've got them dancing in an environment that looks exactly like our source image. And it's all playful and cute. So just to summarize, what's the key benefit of using this method? to maintain a consistent style. Well, what you get is consistency in color grading, color scheme, in the setting that you're defining in your original image, and of course, the medium. So illustration style or animation or 3D models, that's the kind of consistency that you're gonna get if you reinforce it with the medium in your remix prompt as well. Now, the disadvantages of this method is that there's going to be a far narrower scope for your compositions. So whereas with a regular prompt, you may see lots more variation. If you remix these, then you're going to have a composition that is roughly in line with the image that you're remixing. So a good approach to mix that up a little bit would be to, to simply create a new base style image that is roughly in line with the composition that you would like to have and then remix that one. The only difficulty is that it might proved to be a little bit challenging to ensure that that original style image is in line with the other style image that you created. But that's something that obviously is a process of a trial and error. Either way, I think this opens up so many cool options for storytelling, and I'm really curious to see what you guys do with this. Anyway, that's it for today. Make sure you check out the video description for a whole bunch of free stuff, as well as a course on how to control Madrid. I hope you have an awesome day. Take care and keep on learning.